In this video I make a sturdy workbench frame. The first thing to do is to check that our circular saw guide is still at 90 degrees. If needed we remove one screw and then we adjust the guide again. We measure the length of the legs. And with the circular saw and the jig we cut the legs. If our disc is not big enough we cut. And then we turn the leg and we finish the cut. If both cuts are not flush, we can use a planer to smooth it. We make sure all four legs are the same length. We adjust the depth of cut to be bigger than half the thick of our board. And we adjust the guide to cut the pieces to the weight we want. We cut our boards to make the rails. Because the disc won't cut all the thick of the board, we can cut it on the table. We cut on one side, we turn the board, and then we cut on the other half. We mark half the thick of the head of one rail, and we adjust the depth of cut of our circular saw to that mark. We made some cuts in the head of two pieces with the same thickness of the rails, to see if the depth of cut is ok. It looks like it cuts too much, so I needed to make some adjustments. After some adjustments, finally it cuts to the right depth. We mark the position of the dados and the rabbits we need to cut in the legs to fit in the rails. That line is inside the dado we want to cut. That line is outside the dado. That other line is outside the rabbit. We have to make two identical dados in two faces of the legs, one at 90 degrees with the other. Our four legs are the same. We put the edge of our saw guide by the line, but not on the line, and we cut. Now we need to leave the teeth width of our saw disc between the line and the edge of the guide. Or we can cut it from the other side, with the guide on the line. We make sure that the dados and the rabbits are the same wide of the frame rails. When we use the jig, we don't cut to the wish depth, so we need to go over it without the jig. And we make some parallel cuts between them. We use a chisel and a hammer to remove the slices of wood. We clean the bottom by hand with a chisel and a file. We use the same method to cut that other dado, which is at 90 degrees with the first one. Notice that I leave the width of the disc teeth between the line and the edge of the guide. Now we put the jig right on the line. Remember that this line is not inside the rabbit. And we clean the rabbit. We cut the short rails to the width length. If we put the legs on the table, we can cut easily on them. We measure the long rails for the workbench frame and we cut them. We write a C on one end of each rail, and an L on the other end. In the L side we cut a rabbit as long as the width of the legs. In the C side the rabbit is as long as the width of the leg minus the depth of the rabbits. Notice that the lines are out of the rabbits. We use the legs to mark the width of the rabbits in the rails. We put the guide on the line and we cut a rabbit. The same we did with the legs. It is a good idea to check that the rights and the legs fit. 
we may need to make some adjustments. On the floor we put together the long rails and the legs. The top face of the rails must be as straight as possible. We put the seal rabbit of one of the rails on one leg and we put the seal rabbit of the other rail on the other leg. We put the rails flush with the top of the legs and we use a square to make sure that the legs and the rails are at a 90 degrees angle. We drill guide holes and we put a couple of screws. We can widen the rabbits with our circular saw if needed. We do the same with the other side of the table. If we don't do exactly the same, the short rails won't fit. If the rabbit in the head of the rails are too long, we can cut them, or we can use a file to adjust them. Now we clamp the other rail, but not too tight. If they don't fit inside the dados, we can use a planer to narrow the rails. We use the square to adjust the rails and we tighten the clamps. We drill two guide holes and we put a couple of screws. We put some reinforcements inside each corner. We lift the same distance to each side and we mark the meter line. The line must be at 45 degrees. Before putting the corner reinforcements, we will glue the legs and the rails together. I will apply polyurethane glue with a small brush. It expands and fills the gaps. Some polyurethane pours out of the joint, but it is easy to cut when it is dry. When we put the rails back in the legs, we must make sure that the screws go in the guide holes in the legs. The pieces we will put inside the corners are small. If we have a meter saw, it is easy to cut them. If we don't have a meter saw, we can use a couple of screws, a piece of board and a couple of clamps to hold the piece, and we cut it with a circular saw. We tilt or saw this to a 45 degree angle. It is better to make sure that we have exactly a 45 degree angle. We mark the lines where we want to cut. We wear the safety equipment before we plug in the saw. We must make sure that we will not cut on the clamps. We cut freehand. This will be a workbench for my shop, so I don't mind if it is not absolutely perfect. If the disc doesn't cut all the thick, we can finish it with a hand saw. We remove the screws and we turn the workpiece, or we can cut from the other side. If needed, we can use a file to make them fit in place. We clean the pieces. We drill two guide holes to each side and we screw them. We remove the clamp and we screw the piece to the leg, too. We put in place all the pieces to reinforce the frame corners. And there is a sturdy workbench frame. Thanks for watching.